unidentifiable flying object. <laughs> UFO continues to be a mystery. Wasn't alone in space. Sightings of UFOs. Something out there. <laughs> Close enough to be observed. What could it be? It could only be anything. A UFO. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of UFO No, your break from the propaganda, the bad news, the political nonsense. And have a good time talking about some fun topics like UFOs and time travel theory. Oh, it's going to be a good one. Thank you for joining the show. We are in the stratosphere cruising at about 86,000 feet, a little over that, and clear skies, baby. Ed is here with me as well. What's going on, Ed? How are you, buddy? Well, if we're cruising at about 80,000 feet, uh... I'm getting drunk on a plane or hey. a rocket ship, whatever. <laughs> I'm only about a half a beer in, though, so I'm not, like, white girl wasted yet. There you go. There you go. Not super white girl wasted. Just just a little bit. Like yeah, you said, just drunk enough on to a get plane. The yeah, just enough to get the juices flowing. That's right. Oh, Ed, don't tell me about your juices. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm excited for this one, man. It's going to be good. UFOs and time travel. I, this is one of my favorite theories out there, so I'm really excited to get into it. Uh, I know. Before... And we, uh, oh, oh. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Pardon me. Uh, <laughs> I know. And I'm excited because we talked about uh, time anomalies last yeah. week. So uh, this one's going to be good. It uh, yep. ties right in, my friends. You know, it's interesting because when I put these things together, I don't necessarily have like an idea to go, oh, let's do another episode about time since we talked about it. It just happens to be like I start looking things up and I I, I believe in synchronicity. And so it seems to just fall into a, a theme somewhat. It's interesting how things happen like that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So if you uh, like the show, <laughs> yes, exactly. If you like the show, be sure to share this episode. Give us a nice review. It really does help. Hit that subscribe button. If you're on Rumble, you're on YouTube, it really does help. As well as just taking that URL, splashing it around, share it where you may, all over your social medias. That really helps out a lot. Don't forget, you can also go donate, become a UFO No Army member today. Patreon.com slash UFO No Podcast, where you get no ads, all of my loyalty. And so far, third bonus episode. That's right, one every week so far. It's been rad. So if you're a Patreon member, you get two episodes a week, a bonus episode every single time. So uh, as well as I'm going to be trying to add new stuff, me and Ed are always working on new shit together. And so uh, we're always trying to, to grow. So anyways, if you're a Patreon member, that's the first place it's going to show up. So go donate any amount. I love you. Uh, as well as you can go get yourself some merch, just click the link in the show notes. It's the one powerful link that I put in there, uh, the link tree link that links to all my shit. The link Anyways. to rule them all. <laughs> That's right, the link to rule them all. Go click that one. I love you, each and every one. Let's get into this. All right, so as I said, uh, UFOs and time travel theory, one of my favorite theories around the whole UFO mythos. Um the idea is that aliens are actually time traveling humans like future archaeologists or maybe even time traveling tourists. That's a fun thought. Yeah, I can see it. People are already going to space. Why not time travel too? Exactly. And to me, time traveling humans seems the most probable because you look at the way humans are evolving we're becoming less hairy. We're becoming smaller in stature. It's becoming less and less needed for people to work manual labor, hard labor jobs. It's becoming a lot of technical stuff, technology, of course. We're moving into a technological age, have been in one for a while. So there's this theory that, <clears throat> excuse me, that the grays that we typically see in abduction scenarios are us humans evolved into that and that we're coming back. 
I could see it. I could Very see interesting. It. Yeah. Of course, the science and technology that we have today certainly makes the idea of time travel seem impossible. We just don't have it yet. But so is the technology supposedly that aliens have to do what UFO enthusiasts claim, which is traveling billions of light years to come to Earth. So both of those technologies are outside of our scope of, of possibility right now. But neither one, but, but one seems more probable than the other. I you know, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So to me, I think it's more probable that it's future us that have simply, as we do innovative technology, we're, we know we're working on shit like this, as in we, I mean the U.S. government and world governments really, have been working on things like this for a while. So what, 50 to 100 years from now, they've actually figured it out? I mean, look at how fast technology has gone in the last 10 years. Oh, yeah. Now imagine that times 20, times 50. And and it's not going the same pace as it was 50 years ago. It's it's leaps and bounds ahead of where we were. Leaps oh, yeah. and bounds. Ex- exponential growth. Exponential. So it moves so fast that there's no way we could possibly foresee where it's going to go in the next 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, let alone 100, 150, 200 a thousand years. We have well, no idea what that's going to look like. No. And like I was telling you, was it last night or the night before? But uh, out of all the technology, I really hope that uh, they make GTA a uh, like a full size world map, like a, an accurate world map that you can oh, yeah, just go me around. And, and, me and Ed awesome. love to play Grand Theft Auto together. And uh, so, yeah, we were talking about the idea of like what they're going to do with the next game. And, and Ed, Ed, the most brilliant thing was like, dude, imagine them mapping out the whole world for GTA and you can go anywhere. And I was like, oh, you know, that'd be incredible. Brilliant. 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 (laughs) Well, regardless of what you believe about aliens and whether it's future us or, or actual extraterrestrials from billions of year, light years away that have come. Either way, it's all fascinating. That's why it's so much fun to talk about. But let's get into kind of the nuts and bolts of what this UFO time travel theory is really about. So one of the first people to document this theory is Dr. Michael Masters, and he's a professor of biological anthrop- anthropology at Montana Technical University. And in his book, Identified Flying Objects, a Multidisciplinary Scientific Approach to the UFO Phenomena, he argues that the most likely explanation for UFO visitation is, excuse me, our future selves that have mastered and engineered technology to the point where time travel is possible. So basically, you know, so I, I pretty well summed it up pretty well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, so that's what that's what it, it is, is they've simply evolved and and. You know, like I said, you know, why is it that aliens almost always are bipedal, uh, totally hairless? They're humanoids. Oh, almost yeah. always. In in every single abduction scenario, alien encounter, they walk on two legs. They're not hovering. They're not. They're not like floating. They're not even. Don't even. They're not even arachnid in any way. Not even insect like. It's always humanoid. Yeah, yeah, I've uh, I've yet to hear of a hairy alien. That'd be kind of cool, You're except right. for maybe Chewbacca. But that's Star Wars. Yeah, well, of course. I mean, aside from fiction, if there's like you know tales from people meeting aliens, it's never a yeti type thing. But even then, is semi humanoid, bipedal again. Yeah. So you could say evolved to just be bigger in that case, hairier in that case. Interesting. Yeah. So even the heads, like if you think about the grays specifically, you know, one of the most common uh, beings claimed to have been be seen in alien encounters. What's the typical description? Of an alien? Of a, of a gray. Of a gray, little gray, small bodies, big heads, uh, 
kind of like an a upside down tear shaped head. Um, small mouths, big eyes. You nailed it. That's it. Yeah. And some accounts even say they have some small ears sometimes. Oh, that'd be, that'd be cute. Yeah. It's not very, <laughs> it's not nearly as uh, common to have the little ears, but, uh, but yeah, there's a few of them. But that could easily be explained by the evolution of humans based on, once again, how, like I said in the beginning, how humans have evolved so far and how technology is changing our environment around us and our need to, I mean, what keeps people getting big? It's, it's protein, it's meat, it's, it's, it's physical uh, exer- exercise, it's just activity that keeps people, you know, it's, it's core strength building. And so it keeps people big, muscle growth, things like that. Well, now you got a lot of indoor jobs. In fact, the whole world is kind of promoting this work at home idea more than ever. Yep. Even now, implementing things like VR, stuff like that, it's encouraging people to stay home, get jobs where they're not even basically moving around aside from their heads and their hands. So it really does lean towards the idea that we definitely could evolve into that. Absolutely. May abs- definitely not going to be in 50 to 100 years are we going to evolve into that. But over the course of hundreds of thousands of years could certainly evolve into that. Absolutely. So, yeah, more more processed foods. Yeah. So our mouths are getting smaller. Uh weaker bodies, so our bodies are getting smaller. Well, even in space, there's going around right now with uh, uh, the big news is that they're losing bone density in space like crazy. And so even that, if you are traveling, let's say traveling through time and space, either way, even if you're not in space, but you're traveling through time, would you not be in this environment where gravity no longer exists either way? I mean... I guess you could build that if you wanted to. Well, you'd have to have Maybe. like an artificial gravity generator within your ship, but but why? You know, aside yeah. from keeping your your bone density, but anyways, but either way, it all points to smaller frames, smaller structure of humans. Yes. Yeah. Uh But what about uh Yeah. What is what? Uh, what are, who are they? The the Pleiadians aren't? Don't they? Uh, if I'm saying that right, aren't they more humanoid looking? Wait, who? The Pleiadians. Am I saying that right? Who is it? It's the wait. Are you? Do you mean the reptilians? Do you mean which ones? Uh, the Pleiadians. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm not saying it right. Well, which which are you talking about? An alien race? Yes. They're more, they almost are supposed to look, they're the ones that look pretty much identical to humans. Oh, the Nordic? Maybe. You talking about the Nordic ones that they're tall, they're blonde? Uh, I mean, I just know that they, they look like us. I thought, I thought they were called Pleiadians. Well, maybe. I, I Are you saying Theadians? Is that what you're saying? No, P, P with a P. Oh, okay. Maybe. I, I mean, typically they're described as the Nordic type. Okay. Because they're white. They're, I mean, maybe they actually have a name that's that, that I didn't, I potentially, I, I'm sure probably there is. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. You should pump it. You should Google that. See if, uh, cause I, I'm not, I'm not sure how to spell it. Yes. Okay. Hold on just a second. Keep these but, folks entertained. Yeah, but like even human heads, if you if you look how our heads have evolved, even now they're larger than they were in the past. I mean, in fact, a lot of times you can find, um, you know, a lot of the the ancestral remains are are quite a bit smaller in stature. Yeah, that's very true. Yep. And. Uh, you know, like I had mentioned before, some of the technology involved in, I think I was talking to you before the show was started about the technology involved in, in alien encounters where they're communicating with anyone in any language. Okay. And, so, and even, yeah, go ahead. 
Oh, sorry. I wasn't trying to cut you off. Um, I, I did look it up. And so mm-hmm. Pleiadians are humanoids, uh, physically indistinguishable from humans. Uh, they're usually described as tall, standing over 1.8, and uh, in some cases, 2 meters in height, and seem to have a robust physique. Their skin ranges from fair to tanned. Uh, if cases such as that of contactee Elizabeth Clare of any indication are any indication, they also seem to be uh, genetically compatible with humans. Very interesting. So, I'm surprised there could you didn't be know a, about there that. could be a range potentially. Look, I mean, it's it's not. I would oh, imagine other, in a yeah. Go ahead. Other other names: Nordic alien. Okay. Oh, see there there you go. That's what I thought. Yeah. Okay. Plajaran. Yeah, and those are the. I didn't realize they had a, a like a, a scientific name or whatever that is, but I just You're always right. heard them described as the Nordic race. Yeah. You know so the we're, Nordic we're, aliens. Yeah. We we were both right. Yeah. And talking Very, about the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's just it. You know, that's part of what makes this whole mythos so difficult. Is there is all this shit out there of people call different things. Then you have, you know, disinformation, just the whole gambit of things make this such an intriguing topic. And then you have the theories that we're coming to now with science that are seeming to prove something, you know, maybe not that it's alien, but that potentially that it's evolved humans, which I, to me, I find that even more fascinating. Yeah. I mean, look, I, I, I think of it this way. I have a little bit of trepidation when ta- when thinking about the idea that there is alien races out there involved in a potential galactic war that we don't know about that may or may not have Earth's best interest in mind and right. may or may not be abducting people for sick pleasure or scientific research. Either way, it's happening. And they if they destroy us, what do they lose? A a species that's not their own. Now you have future humans that are coming back to study us. Well, they're definitely not going to fuck with us. Well, if we're compatible with them too, we could be another resource for like body tissue organs. Yeah. Stuff like that. Uh, Michael Ralston, my buddy that, uh, also Patreon member. Thank you, brah. Uh, was talking about cattle mutilations and how it would make perfect sense for future humans to come back and extract tongue tissue, liver tissue, the blood, because that's everything you need to replicate a species. Mm -hmm. And that if you have a species that has gone extinct, such as cattle, then they could potentially be harvesting these things to bring back the species or keep the species because maybe they're not able to, like, keep them around. So they have to lab them, you know, grow them in a lab only. And so, therefore, you need resources in order to do I don't know. I don't know. I'm speculating hard right now. But that was something that we had talked about was the idea that it, it really does tie up a lot of the typical um alien weird questions why the fuck are they fucking with with cattle why are they uh take why are they experimenting on humans which i don't think that's aliens i think that's government making it look like aliens through you know mk ultra experiments mind manipulation drugs you name it i could see it yeah and and i really do believe that everything else where it's you know seeing a craft that potentially looks i mean to me it, it just anyways we'll we'll go through it more and i'm hoping that uh to see what what other people think about the validity of this theory because this theory excites me because again i would have no trepidation of it being future humans because i know they're not going to destroy us but an alien True. race could potentially have that in mind well, I, well, future us could have that in mind too if we're heading into a direction they're like these motherfuckers. We need well, to no, stop because them. if look, uh, here's the idea though: if it's future humans and they destroy us, they've destroyed themselves. Well, if it's for the greater good, maybe they would. <laughs> well, maybe I the mean, whole, all, okay. the whole race would come together, I suppose, and they'd be like mutually agree. 
<laughs> I suppose the Mexican standoff version of time. You're right. <laughs> That'd be a crazy scenario. We fucked up so bad they have to go back and kill themselves. Like that's nuts. Yeah. <laughs> that's a that, boy, we we must I don't even know what that would look like what we would have done. I know any screenwriters out there that listening that uh want to <laughs> yeah, no co-op shit. on a co- put that one yeah, together. Collaborate on a movie. <laughs> yeah. I only want a little piece. I just want uh, it would be my passion project. That's what it would be. Yeah, no shit. Um so again, back to the some of the technology in involved in these alien encounters and the idea that they can communicate so well with anyone. Well, there's a couple of things about this is one, if humans or if aliens are humans, future humans, and they are coming back to study human history firsthand, which I would love to do. I would. I that would be amazing to be able to to do ex- experience history firsthand. That'd be incredible. Hell yeah, yeah, right. But they would have. I would imagine they would have a pretty immense archive of all known human languages oh, through yeah. travel. You know, traveling through time. I mean, they would know languages that we don't know. Because they would have been able to go back and actually document them before there was writing, potentially yeah. before yeah. there. Yeah, you know what I mean. Um, uh, so imagine how much more growth there would be. In imagine, and again, the 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 perspective of knowing your origins, the perspective of knowing. Look, if you know where you began, you have an idea where you're going to end, yeah. and. The, that's a big thing that I think humans, you know, humanity struggles with is we have no clue basically why we're even here. A lot of us struggle with that one. So if if we can pinpoint how it all began, I think it gives us a much better idea of what we're doing here in the first place. Not to mention going back and seeing ancient cultures and how they actually interacted with Earth and to actually see if the theories are right, that they were utilizing natural energies on earth and were so far, so much more advanced in certain ways than we are ba- because of their community, their connection with the earth as opposed to technology. Yeah. <clears throat> I'd be fascinated to know that. So again, if they are, you know, so, so they would have this huge library of human languages going back to the beginning of time if they had the capability to traverse time right now we have google translate on on a on a phone that you can translate almost any language in real time over a phone all you got to do is hold it up talk into it and it'll translate to somebody else i've i've had i've done this with vietnamese people before when i was selling plants and you talk to a vietnamese and and like they're trying to, you know, cheaper, cheaper. And you're like, uh, anyway, so it's, I know it's all about that. <laughs> obviously my, step, my, my stepmom's feeding me. So, <laughs> oh, well shit. Yeah. Yeah. So obviously it's, it's rudimentary compared to where it could be, but, but we're seeing the, the beginnings of these technologies now, Mm-hmm. Right now, these things that we see in alien encounters that have been going back hundreds of, th- you know, hundreds, if not hundreds of thousands of years, that we're, they're utilizing this to communicate with people. We can almost do that right now. Yeah. And in a lot of. Imagine. A- yeah, go ahead. So Sorry. Imagine all the crime that would be pretty much obliterated. Like there'd be no crime virtually. Because you could go back in time and either prove that they did it and they'd go to prison like instantly or uh, prevent them from happening. Kind of like Minority Report in a sense. Only they're well, predicting it before it happened. Well, that gets into like the whole sticky topic yeah. of the, the timeline. Gig. Yeah. You know, and, and like, well, if that didn't happen – then what is that? How, then it clearly creates a new timeline. And how does it change? What does it change? Right. You know, so so that what's hard about that, this is, I mean, we're going to get into a little bit more, but the idea that 
the the uh, UFO time travel theory to me explains this concept of why don't the aliens interact with us more? Why haven't they come and made contact yet? And if they are future us, they would know better than to do that. They would know that they couldn't make contact. And if they did, guess what? They would have to take you and experiment on you and make you forget. And potentially manipulate that memory to make you think it's aliens. Yeah, Potentially. I don't know. But uh, the Travis Walton uh, experience is, is actually a really interesting one because not only were there grays there, but there were what he described as the same height as him in a helmet that he couldn't see their face in some kind of a spacesuit that led him off the ship. And they were with grays. And so there's actually a lot of these, you know, people say that there's, you know, other humanoids along with these, you know, that maybe look like uh, reptilians. Well, we don't know how far evolution is going to go, you know, and, right. and what if there is, I mean, look, we have gene manipulation now. So how far are they going to take that a thousand years to where now people can become lizards if they want? Yeah. I mean, people already identify as deer. So you might as well just become a lizard. Right. You know what I mean? Like I identify yeah. as a butterfly. And so, you know, yeah, okay, go for it. And then and then so they go and they, you know, grow fur and stuff. I mean, shit, man, we have no idea. Once again, we have no idea where this technology is going to go. We're seeing its infancy, literally its birth right now. Genetic manipulation, um, quantum technology. That's going to be huge in time travel. Huge. Oh, yeah, for sure. Obviously, it's going to be necessary to travel through time to, I mean, look, look, everybody knows. Hey, Ant-Man, that's how they did it. Fuck yeah. They quantum realm that shit. So, uh, again, a lot of our present day technology is, is, seems to be the early, early, early blueprints for what could be advanced technology used by what we're calling aliens. And this uh, Dr. Masters, he says that even the fact that we're aware of the potential for time travel makes it extremely likely, likely the future humans have done it and probably are doing it. Oh, for sure. You know, the fact that we are, uh, look, I, I, I will make a firm stance and say they are working on this. They have to be. You know, mind control and time manipulation have to be two of the most sought after powers, right? Because right. either one of those, you can control anything. If you can control the minds of people, you can control what they do. If you can control time, you can control when they did it. So either way, sure. you're controlling everything in those two, in my opinion, in those two elements. Um, so what, so why wouldn't they, if their whole thing is, oh, well, you know, we don't want to, uh, we want to get the jump on these technologies before someone else does. Well, then you bet your ass they're already doing it. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And again, look at the technological leaps we're making as a species. It's unbelievable. I mean, we're talking about, they've, they've created chips now that are the size of atoms. What? Like, that's nuts. That's nuts. That's, yeah, that's fucking crazy. That's insane. Because things are made up of atoms. So now you're going to have things made up of other things, of machines, chips. You won't, you won't know the difference. I mean, it's, and then you add AI to that, quantum into that. I mean, done. Imagine uh, an AI humanoid that also has quantum computing capabilities. We're done. The human race is done. You know what I mean? Fucking trippy. Trippy. So, and then uh, you add a 3D printer to that thing where it can 3D print its own skin. It can 3D print its own parts. Dude, they're, they're putting 3D printing factories up in space to print factories. Metal 3D printers in space. Oh, yeah, that actually doesn't surprise me. For no. Some reason. So, so you combine any three, any... 
all any one of those technologies and you have any something more advanced than any human has ever seen already already i'm not even talking about future us i'm talking about right now it's scary how fast we're moving it's crazy that's fucking crazy yeah yeah so you know even the greatest achievements in medicine and science have happened uh, in relatively short period of time if you look at it the oh, last yeah. 200 years maybe you oh, know i sure. mean that's yeah <laughs> fuck I think back to the fucking, yeah, days as far as medicine goes. Think back to, like, the fucking good old Western days. They're putting, like, flannel shirt and fucking whiskey and Coke and fucking, hey, here, drink this. This will make you better. Yeah. <laughs> 60 years ago, we didn't really understand mental health. And now we are creating mind-reading ampu- uh, prosthetics for amputees. 60 years. So it's, it, that is insanity. Yeah. That is insanity. And once again, now that you have AI, which is self learning technology matched with quantum technology, now you have the fastest self learning technology on the planet. So that's, it's, it's nuts, man, to think about. So again, like, where does that go in a hundred years? That's Sorry insane. That <laughs> He's saying hi. Yeah, right. He's saying hey, hi everybody. to the people. He's like, what's up, everybody? I like aliens too. <laughs> <laughs> so again, when you think about technologies a thousand years in the future, you can't even, that's unimaginable. That's unimaginable. It's, it's magic. Even a hundred years from now is going to look like magic. Mm-hmm. So if you, if you went to sleep right now and woke up 10 years from now, I'm sure it would blow your mind. Even 10 years ago, think about 10 years before this. Right. Would you have imagined half of this stuff? No. Crazy man, it's crazy. It's unreal. And the so way, it, and even just in the last three, four years, how civilization has like just like flip flopped and changed. Yeah, so drastically. So drastically. Well, now we are not only are we dependent on technology, but we are going balls deep into just seeing how far humans can. I guess blend blends, not the right word, assimilate with technology without giving up their humanity. It seems like it's like a race to see how close we can get to the edge without falling off. Right. Because I mean, like I said, I mean, look with quantum computing and AI, we have no idea what's going to happen when those things surpass human capability, which already quantum computing in 200 seconds solved a math equation that would take a modern day computer 10,000 years. It did it in 200 seconds. So that's, you know, most computers these days can fairly outdo a human. Yeah. You know, like chess is a great example of that. How, you know, it's the, the a computer chess is extremely hard to beat. But now you add quantum technology to that, it's it's a no-brainer. It's going to learn the entire internet in a matter of moments when humans, we've never learned the entire internet. <laughs> kind of like, uh, like uh, Dudesy. Yeah, exactly. Oh, man, that's such a cool show. You guys got to check it out on YouTube, Dudesy, the podcast. Yeah. It's great. Will Sasso it's, and uh, what's his name? Chad? Colchin? Yeah, that's what it is, Colchin. Yeah, great show. Yeah. Hilarious. I love Will Sasso. He's hilarious. So the but premise. Yeah, all run by is, AI. Yeah, all like yeah. all of it. Yep. All of it. Yeah, it's, it's cool. Yeah. I, the other side of this, there's many sides of this. I mean, there's more sides than we're even going to talk about, about this time travel theory, but 
only because it's such a broad topic and it covers so much. But the other side of it that I really, really enjoy is the idea of time travel tourism. Yeah, for sure. I'd like to go back and see, watch the fucking pyramids be created or or watch the Declaration of Independence be signed or fucking, you know, Martin Luther's speech. That'd be fucking cool. Yeah. Watch the Beatles become big. <laughs> That'd be oh, fucking yeah, cool. Man. The beginning of everything. You could see the beginning of anything you ever wanted to see. Oh, I wish I could see the be the very beginning of the Rolling Stones. I wish right. I could see the very beginning of, like you said, the pyramids. I wish I could see the very beginning of the Golden Gate Bridge. I wish I could see, you know, what did uh what what did what is it called the uh the landmass that was the world before it split up? I'm trying to I keep Pangea. I keep wanting to say pan uh, Pangea. I keep I kept wanting to say panspermia. I don't know where the fuck. That's, Pretoria. That's, if I ever buy an <laughs> island, I'm naming it Panspermia. Reminds me of, uh, yeah, Family Guy. What is it? <laughs> Pretoria. <laughs> <laughs> so that I going back to that, you know, being able to see the beginnings of the world, you know that. that I mean, just I mean, it, obviously, this is all speculation because we have no idea the capabilities of this right in fact we're going to get into some potential machines of what they have the capabilities to do and uh and maybe think about that but um the idea of time travel tourism the concept i love the idea that a world exists where time travel has become so widely available and accepted that anyone can do it. Oh, for sure. That'd be cool. I just like love that. Like right now, the idea of going into space is so out of the grasp of most people. And so that, that right now we're on the cusp of that, of that becoming available to the average person, maybe not the average person, but yeah, not us poor motherfuckers. <laughs> Probably chances are not have to sneak in somebody's duffel bag. Get on fucking uh, Expedia or some shit like that. True Vago. That's right. Be like, oh, That's I'm right. looking for the cheapest flight to space. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you what. As soon as I get enough Patreon members to buy me a ticket onto the space shuttle, I'll do it. Oh, for sure. I'm down for that. You got to take me with you. <laughs> deal. It's done man. deal. I'm going to do it. I'll put in the reservations now. Yeah, I got GoPros and camera equipment, so. <laughs> there you go. You watching you Patreon, go. people. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, I hey. love that idea that anyone could do it. And to think of like, you know, again, I mean, what are we seeing right now? What Could it be a, a mixed bag of teachers, professors, and bunch of rich people coming back from the future to get a taste of history? I could see it. I mean, we don't even have space tourism yet, of course, you know, like I was saying, I mean, that would, we're on the cusp, you know, but how long ago did that sound crazy? Oh, for a long time. And, and now we're right there. I mean, right. They're doing, they're, they're implementing commercial flights now. Pretty much. I mean, fucking William Shatner went to space. Did he? Yes. Oh, that's fucking cool. Yeah, man. Uh, I think it was Jeff Bezos took him up there. Uh, fuck Jeff but Bezos, yeah. but well, yeah, exactly. I know, yeah, exactly. Shatner's but but if, that's... if Jeff Bezos offered me a chance to go to space, I'd probably take it too. But yeah, and then just... I would punch him in the dick. Yeah, on the way out, be like, "Thanks, boom." Exactly. <laughs> Thanks, douche. <laughs> poof. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah, exactly. Hey, I gotta. Uh, I, I, I'm real sorry. I gotta run to the bathroom real, real God quick. God damn you, Ed! I, I know. <laughs> I know. Oh, uh, <laughs> it's the beer, man. It's the beer. I'll be right back. It's all good. Well, while Ed is gone, I will just say in this moment that uh, it's a good chance to go and donate patreoncom slash podcast because you're gonna get a bonus episode where talk about. Um, some of the technology coming down the pike that I think is crazy and weird and maybe a little uh, ominous. 
and uh, break that down. So be a good chance to go in there once again, donate, as well as you can go get yourself some merch. And uh, in the link, the one powerful link that you can follow that leads you to merch, leads you to YouTube channel, Rumble, all that great stuff. Check it all out. We got it all. And again, me and Ed are doing great things. So stay tuned. We're going to do a lot more. As soon as he's done peeing. (laughs) You know, when you got to go, you got to go. You know? (laughs) He's got his dog there, so that's where he's... uh, His dog is in the background. Hanging out. He just loves to say hi. Who loves to say hi? He does. Ringo. Ringo. What's that? No, yours. Yours. He loves to say hi. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now I was just telling the people where to go check out merch and all that good stuff. So Sweet. Yeah. But anyway, so, so yeah, you know, I, this, this idea of space tourism sounds crazy, but it's really not that crazy because we're coming there. And so, again, you know, you push that out. And uh, we're not far from uh, from potential time travel tourism. That would be a trip. A trip. I mean, look, think about some of the advancements we have now. I mean, we've mentioned some of them, you know, Google Translate and uh, stuff like that. But think about self-driving cars. I mean, shit, okay. cars in general, that wasn't even that long ago when they invented cars. No. Turn so, of the century. Yeah, less than 200 last, years. Yeah, last century, not this century. <laughs> but really, I mean, that's, you know, less than 200 years, we went from zero cars to self-driving cars. And now they're talking about flying cars and all kinds of stuff. I mean, it's, who knows I've where been, we're going. I've been waiting for flying cars my whole life. Okay, I know, man. I know. But they do make sort of. Like yeah, I mean, they're like, like a, a drone. They're like a drone that you yeah, ride in. Yeah. Yeah, they look like badass, I know. But think about that. I mean, even the idea of a car to a lot of people back before they were invented was completely outside of what people could imagine. Yeah. And and smartphones. I mean, look, I pick on smartphones a lot because it's it's one of the most astonishing technologies that we take for granted because it, it it really is the world's knowledge at the tip of your fingers. Yeah. Yeah. Anything you want to know, anything you want to know the internet, any, anywhere you want to go on the internet, check something out. I mean, obviously we have a lot of curated shit these days, but aside from that, the capability of what we have to gain knowledge from virtually anywhere, any source at any time is, well, it would have been, it would have been life changing for anyone who, before they had it, if you were the only one, yep. imagine if you had Google in the times of <laughs> Genghis Khan, I mean, I don't know Holy what good shit. that would do him really, but. He, he Think would have about, conquered the whole fucking world. Jesus, man. Because you'd have a map yeah. of the world. Think about that. And now with things like Google Earth, we can not only look at Earth and anywhere on Earth, but we can now look at Mars and the moon. Yep, and the sun. It's, it's crazy. Sun. Yeah, That's it's insane. Crazy. It's insane. And again, bringing it back to some of the most Breakthrough technologies now, AI, quantum computing. It's just insane where it's going. And time traveling humans, to me, again, seems to explain why there is this limited interaction between UFOs and humans. Yeah. I mean, even if we go out and we master the technology to go out into space and travel, I, I'm sure that we would, I would hope, 
Well, obviously, we would send the best. I would, ho- well, I would hope. Jesus, anymore, I have no idea. Chances are they'd send a TikToker and a YouTuber up. But, Probably. oh my God, can you imagine? So, I would hope that we would be careful when interacting with civilizations that we run into out there. And take our time to recon the area, learn something about them, eventually introducing ourselves. But if it's future humans, like I said before, you don't have to worry about interacting because of the timelines. And you don't have to worry about messing with timelines if you if you're talking to an alien race. So we can go out and interact in space with other alien civilizations and alien civilizations can interact with us with no consequences in time, supposedly. So therefore, the idea that we would need to avoid each other seems, I don't know, it seems pointless to travel all this way to do, to do years and years and years of observations and never interact except by accident. Yeah. Or with, or with random peasant women and farmers. You know, I mean, it's just, to me, that makes no sense. Yeah. But if it's time-traveling humans, you accidentally run into a farmer or a, a peasant woman. Well, now you've got to implant a memory or you got to skedaddle real quick. So I don't know, but... I just think that there's some freedom there. If we meet other civilizations, we don't have to worry about messing with the timeline. But you do if you're talking from future humans to past humans. Yeah, if I was to visit the past, it's kind of a catch-22 because if you want to go and visit the past, you typically, I mean... Of course, you might want to go see the pyramids be built or whatever, but typically you'd want to go back in your life. And that's where it gets hairy because you can still go back in time and fuck with other people that (laughs) are not directly related to you. Like you could go over to London, even though I'm from here in little Idaho, I can go over to London in the past and fuck with people over there. And, you know, it probably wouldn't have an effect on me current state. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, It's when you start fucking with your own shit, I think is really when it becomes the problem. Well, that's where the beauty of the butterfly effect, I think, we don't know how broad the effects would be. I mean, that's where that's where the idea that once again, the fact that they're not interacting with us says to me that makes so much sense if it's humans because the potential to create devastation through one small act. You 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 change the perspective of one person that was meant to cure cancer and now they've invented roller skates. You know, I mean, that's right. the difference. Yeah, that's true. So that, again, to me, if you're aliens traveling billions of miles, yeah, do some recon, but then you're going to want to get to know these people you're studying. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's the idea. But... Again, I just think this future humans theory really ties a bow around a lot of these these questions. You know, the other yeah. thing is the future human theory explains all these cases and claims of these warnings being given to people when they're abducted or they they meet an alien or something about future events. It's always future events like nuclear war. The future of humanity is at stake. Right. Clean up your act. Do better. Things like that. You know, the argument is that, well, alien races want humans in the Galactic Federation or humans are, you know, they want us to be enlightened and to join them and, you know, whatever. Okay. Well, yeah, that sounds great. Or it could be us looking out for us. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. There's a, uh, there's an interesting case, very short one, but it's kind of interesting. Um, from 1922 from a guy named Paul Armadeus Dinoch. Uh, he fell into a coma after getting really sick 
And uh, I'm not sure exactly how long he was out, but it was a little while. But after waking up, he claimed that he traveled into the future to the year 3096, entering someone else's consciousness, a guy named Andrew Notham. Very interesting. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, there's a whole book on this, actually. He uh, So supposedly, somebody close to him got his notes during this time in 3096 and put them together in a book called the book of the future. Um, I couldn't actually, I don't know if I found the actual book or not. I'm not sure, but either way it chronicles his st whole story. And so anyone who wants to go check it out, I'm going to put it in the show notes, uh, the, the description, but go check it out. You can, you know, check out the book. I'm trying to find it somewhere where I can just listen to the book, but so far I haven't found it. So anyways, you can go buy it if you want. Uh, but it, either way, it's really interesting claim about his time in the year 3096. Um, but is it legit? Don't know. Is it real? Don't know. It's in a book. It has to be. It has to be, right? <laughs> of legit. course. It is fascinating. Uh, the question is... It seems to be, well, I guess it's not a question, but it seems to be astral projection through time travel or time travel through astral projection. Yeah. But then, you know what else it sounds like is it sounds like possession. Yeah. Like demon possession almost, but obviously, well, maybe he's not a demon. Who knows? But yeah. anyways, Never interesting. Know. That shit could go hand in hand, man. Never know. Exactly. Exactly. Could very well be. It just makes you think about all the phenomena out there and how it does seem so similar to each other. Like, think about what a what a, a demonic possession is. They claim it's a, a demon, and this, this thing is like wreaking havoc on the body. Obviously, it's a little bit more religious in nature, things like that. But what if it's misinterpreted? What is it misinterpreted, you know, actions through right. this person that's trapped inside? Maybe it's someone that doesn't know how to do it. Yeah. So they're fucking it up. Who knows? But there have been a lot of these UFO sightings that I think if you look at it in the right perspective... <clears throat> could be considered time travel. Oh, absolutely. Like, yeah. Like uh, during the 1880s and 1890s in the U.S., I don't know if you're familiar with the mysterious airships that were sighted. Uh-uh. Yeah, so in... Uh, there was numerous reports. I mean, it was all throughout the world, but specifically in the 1880s and 1890s in the U.S., there were a ton of these sightings of futuristic uh, um, airships. Now, mind you, this is the 1880s and 1890s. This is long before the Zeppelin and all that stuff, you know, was invented. So yes. this was very foreign to them, but there, it, there were a lot of reports of these. Not only that, but then some of the claims said that there were pilots that looked human except that their clothes were unusual so that could absolutely be future humans wearing um some kind of space suit or some kind of environmental suit that would obviously look weird to people in that time looking crazy uh in april 1897 one of these cases in texas john barclay saw a strange airship land in one of his fields and a crew got out of it. So he went up to the crew of the airship, who he says was most definitely human. And they asked if they could buy some supplies. So the pilot pulled out a $10 bill and gave it to Barclay and told him to keep the change. Mind you, this is 1897. Ooh, rich motherfucker. 
So when Barclay returned with the goods, he asked them where they came from, and they said they were from anywhere, but will be in Greece the day after tomorrow. Interesting. Weird. Think about that. Like, what if you are a person that can travel through time and you know human's history, you know that back in 1890 they haven't seen shit, and you land and you decide to be casual but impressive. So you whip out a $10 bill because... To 1897, $10 bill is impressive. Right? That's a dollar bill. Take your hand off. (laughs) (laughs) And then to say that they're from anywhere at a time when they could barely go anywhere. Yeah. Limited. Very limited. Limited to horse and buggy. And even then, if you weren't wealthy enough to own a horse, you were foot. So here they're saying they're claiming they're from anywhere. So these are very small. Like nowadays, somebody says, oh, where are you from? And they go, oh, I've been everywhere. That yeah. doesn't mean much, right? And you're like, oh, yeah, this guy could fly somewhere, drive somewhere, whatever. But back in 1897, that statement alone from anywhere, that meant something. Oh, for sure. Because, again, not well. everybody, very few people could go anywhere. All right. It means you were well off. Super wealthy, yeah, and then to say, but we'll be in Greece the day after tomorrow. Well, that's very quick travel in that time. Yes. So anyways, very interesting statements that I think, to me, sound like someone who isn't giving them mind-blowing information to be impressive, but just even the basic, most basic of aspects, that is impressive to them. Right. Yep. And understood that. Understood that. So didn't give too much away, but just enough to make a statement. I like it. Yeah. So uh, now what's interesting to think about is did they mean ancient Greece or did they mean that at 1897 Greece? 1897 Greece? <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> well, I mean, they could, if they're time travelers, they could have meant they were going to be in ancient Greece day after tomorrow. That, that, that's very true too. Yeah. So anyways, just, uh, just the possibilities. I just love it. But that's time travel tourism. A bunch of people just coming back to experience things, handing out $10 bills, blowing minds. God, that's the life. Oh, fuck yeah. (laughs) So there's word that, you know, that this, I, there's an idea that the Vatican has a lot of crazy shit, Oh, like occult stuff, potential, you know, ancient technology type stuff. Uh, not to mention like their knowledge of things. So I'd believe it. Yeah. So there is this idea that they have are in possession of the Nazi bell and the chrono visor. Are you familiar with those? Uh, I, I know what the Nazi bell is, but not the chrono. chrono yeah. Chrono, so for yeah. for those that aren't familiar, <laughs> the Nazi bell um, was. Well, they say allegedly, I'm pretty sold on the idea. So I'm going to say it like I mean it. <laughs> Do it. Uh, the Nazi Bell, or De Glock, was a top secret Nazi scientific technological device, secret weapon, also known as the Wonderwaff. And um, the idea was that it was spinning mercury at high speed that would create an anti-gravity field to allow the ship to travel. But then there were also claims from a guy, uh, let's see, Nick Cook, uh, in his book, The Hunt for Zero Point, I believe is what it was, points out 
that there was also this claim that they had engineered it as a time machine along with the anti-gravitational ability. Okay. Yeah. So two high-speed counter-rotating cylinders filled with purplish liquid metallic-looking substance, which a lot of people believe is mercury, or codenamed Zerum five twenty five, but I thought I kept thinking it was it. They were saying it was mercury. It spun at high speeds, but maybe not. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was this special radioactive goo called Zerum five twenty five. But either way, Nazi Bell potentially a Nazi time machine. That'd be a scary thought. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, really scary thought. But uh, now the chronovisor, that's an interesting one because the chronovisor is, it was actually described by a gay, a guy, a gay, <laughs> a guy whoa, named whoa, whoa. Father. <laughs> whoa, You're canceled. Whoa, whoa. You're whoa. canceled. <laughs> uh, Father Francis or Francois Brune in his 2002 book, La Nord Mystère du Vatican. Uh, the Vatican's new mystery was allegedly a functional time viewer. A time viewer. So instead of being a time machine, you could view time. What, you look into a magic fountain or something? Well, it's a visor, chrono visor. So it, they described it as a large cabinet with a cathode ray tube, which is a vacuum tube containing one or more electron guns that people would view and receive events in a series of buttons, levers, and other controls for selecting the time and the location to be viewed. It could also locate and track specific individuals. According to its inventor, it worked by receiving, decoding, and reproducing the electromagnetic radiation left behind from past events. Hmm. Crazy. That is crazy. Yeah. So... If that's the case, let and you know, this is we're talking about the Nazis back in 1930 who may have uh created time travel. Who may yeah, have invented maybe. the technology? Yeah. And then I mean, who's to say they didn't use it? Right. In some way. Could have been yeah. Yeah. There is uh yeah, it's very interesting because once again, this is back in the thirties, nineteen thirties, when you have this going on with the Nazis. I don't know exactly when the Nazi bell was uh supposedly, you know, invented, uh, whatever, but I think there's enough circumstantial evidence to say it was probably a thing. And and absolutely, we, you know, we through Operation Paperclip, we ended up getting our hands on a lot of that technology and a lot of those oh, scientists. So for sure. For since sure. the 40s and 50s, we potentially have been working on time travel. If That's a long longer. time to perfect that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. There is a, uh, there's also, if you're familiar, I don't know if you know about the Kecksburg UFO incident. I don't. 1965, Kecksburg, Pennsylvania, a fireball was reported by citizens of six U.S. states and Canada. Um, of course, astronomers and NASA say it was a meteor, but the other people say that it was actually the Nazi bell. Interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see if I can feed. Yeah. Anyways, but yeah, that's, that was, uh, cause it was bell shaped. It had some kind of weird hieroglyphics on the side of it. It's a trip. 
Very weird stuff, man. Very weird stuff. But yeah, so is that, and then my, I mean, look, I, I keep trying to get with, uh, our UFO, no army member, Michael Benavides about his grandfather and Roswell, because I have some theories about, about Roswell being a time machine that crashed there as opposed to it being a ufo yeah and that being the reason why the need for the secrecy and the the such a a swift collection of it was not just because it was you know advanced technology but it definitely wasn't alien it was future yeah i mean man thinking into that too hard and it, it might hurt your brain a little bit it might bust your brain for a second yeah well yeah i mean look i you know everything is possible yeah i mean really you know when you think about it and when you look back in ancient history you know this idea of time travel time uh you know ancient astronauts theory um but ancient writings and legends they talk about time travelers In the Crazy. yeah, in the legend of Urashima Taro from Japan, they talk about an individual who ventured to an underwater palace in Ryujin, a dragon god, where he remained for three days. And when he returned, he discovered that three hundred years had passed. That's crazy. Now, according to Ancient astronaut theory references to dragons and dragon gods are actually describing a flying object like a rocket due to the fact that they breathe fire. Oh. Huh. Mm-hmm. There's also a lot of UFO sightings connected to bodies of water, underwater bases, maybe portals, gateways. There's a lot of talk about under the ocean, potentially they're being portals and gateways and that's why USOs Antarctica. Mm -hmm. in Hindu mythology they talk about Ravada Kakudmi and his journey to meet the creator god Brahma and when he came back he also found that a long time had passed and Brahma explains in this mythology that it's because depending on what realm of existence a person is in Time runs at different paces. Hmm. Yeah. It's ancient mythology talking about that. We have science that's posing the same thing. Yeah. Well, they were smart motherfuckers back then. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, because they didn't limit themselves to the possibility of of just what they could see and feel, and you know, it was it was about what they believed. Right. Right. In Buddhist text, Pali Canon. It said that time passes differently in the lands of the gods, that a day in God's realm is a year on earth for humans. Is that time travel? Well, like we talked about last week, time is relevant to oneself. It certainly is. It certainly is. So we all know about Nostradamus, right? Mm -hmm. Crazy premonitions, predictions. A lot of it seems to be eerie in in how accurate it can be. So where did that come from? Was it divine inspiration? Was it this concept of the muse? A lot of people believe in the muse. There's some researchers that believe that he got these messages from the occult, which also has a lot to do with portals and gateways. Could be. It's Even, uh, tough, what, go ahead. Tough, oh, I was going to say, it's really tough to say. I mean, yeah, but they're all viable, viable options. 
Well, that's the idea. Is it's all possible. I mean, that's that's why anyone that it always cracks me up when people say, like, not to pick on religion, but I I love it when people say that they're religious, they believe in God, but that they don't believe in UFOs. And I say, and I just want, and I usually don't because I don't want to be a dick and I don't want to be disrespectful. But at the same time, I just want to go, well, what makes one more possible than the other? Right. You, you know, I, I, I mean. I can understand that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's my whole thing is I just don't understand, like, I don't understand. I, I At the same time, I don't believe, I don't understand atheists and you and UFO enthusiasts. I don't believe in, I, I don't understand how you can not believe in the the possibility of God, but yet believe in UFOs. Right. So that, you know, on the same coin, I, I don't understand that either. I mean, anything is possible and we as humans barely know shit. So it's just, it's just funny to me, but, but, uh, Leonardo da Vinci is is an interesting one because he had a lot of uh, maybe not premonitions or predictions, but he certainly had a lot of advanced ideas and inventions. And a lot of people speculate as to where he got all that. Yeah, it's a fucking trip, man. There are, I don't know if you know this, but there is actually two years where there is no record of Da Vinci and where he went. Oh, really? You know, yeah. Did you know that? I didn't. Yeah. Two years where there's no record of him whatsoever. He seems to have just completely disappeared off the face of the earth. Now, what's interesting about that, aside from the fact that he just seems to up and vanish for two years, is that he talks about a mysterious cave system that he found that he felt a need to enter. And then, poof, two years. Magic cave. Portal. Magic cave. So did he find a portal? Yeah. Like you said, a gateway to the future. A crack in time. Remember we talked about cracks in time? By the way, if you haven't checked out the previous episode, what the fuck are you doing with your life? Yeah, this is this this is more or less like a part two, unintentional. Kind of, yes. kind of. <laughs> Synchronicity, man. Once again, I had no intention of doing anything and talking about time, but it just kind of popped up, and I, I was like, "Oh, I like it. Let's talk about it." I, you know, I just when I research, I just look into topics, and this time travel theory just fell in there. Time travel, and I was like, "Oh, I love that theory. Let's talk about it." And then when you start putting it together about all these, you know, sightings and then people in the past, it, it really is interesting when you start looking at it from a time traveling perspective, how easy it is to say, ah, that, that, that could be, I mean, it's easy for me. It's easy for me. I'm a bit of a kook. <laughs> Aren't we all in our own right? I think so. I think we kooks have more fun. Yeah, me too. Yeah. So we all know from history that he was a brilliant guy. Even before this two year, you know, whatever this was, he was brilliant. He was a brilliant man. He had brilliant ideas. <clears throat> so imagine this brilliant man from the past getting even a glimpse of what the future might look like. Think about that. Oh, man, he would have so much of an upper hand compared to everybody else. Yeah. Well, and, and now, again, you know, look at his flying machines, look at his inventions. I mean, it's really kind of crazy. Very. Yeah. So, you know, did, did, it, did he see something that gave him the inspiration to help progress humanity in some way? Possible. Also, like, uh, you know, going back to how far advanced technology has become is something I like to think about a lot is, like, sci-fi movies even back from the 80s and the 90s and how even they 
I mean, they got a lot of shit right. A lot of these movies got a lot of shit right. And there's there's some argument into, you know, life imitating art and, and vice versa. But something none of them ever even imagined was the internet. Yep. Or social media. Yep. None of them. I mean, you had you had video, you know, technology. You had all kinds of te- teleportation technology, which still really hasn't come to pass. But I think we're we're right there. But it's interesting to look back at these things and think about how crazy of a technological age we're in. And even just 20, 30 years ago, it was completely unimaginable. Right. And, and again, we might not have time travel yet or anti-gravity propulsion, supposedly. The government probably does, but we don't. But we're, we're well on our way. Well on our way. And... With that being said, if, you know, the government probably has a lot more, I'm sure of it. You know, what do they have in store for us, for humanity? What do they know about Only humanity know. with this advanced technology? What are they going to do with it? Is it going to be disaster, which seems to be what, they, what they're best at? Or, or, is there, or are they actually going to use it to help save humanity? Probably not. Probably not. Monetary gain usually seems to be there. Yeah, greed. Really, that's it. Greed and power. That's it. But maybe that explains all the secrecy. It's not about aliens. It's not about crafts from another world. It's about technologies they've implemented that they don't want us to have because they know what it's going to do for humanity and they want to make sure they set themselves up first. Right. Right. And of course, diversion tactics. I mean, that, you know, that keeps everybody guessing what the fuck is going on. Nobody has a clue what's That's why this, you know, all the UFO stuff is just uh, swarming the culture and yet nobody gives a shit. And, I think it's it's all just to get another another generation of people believing in the UFO mythos so they can continue to do what they've done, use it as a front. And since we don't know what the government has, their abilities, or if they have the ability to travel through time, because they fuck everything up, why assume that future humans, the technology hasn't gotten in the wrong hands already? Right. And what's to stop future humans from fucking with the timeline in the past? Yeah, it's a fine line, man. It's yeah. A fine line. And again, you know, these these wreckages in, you know, one of the biggest arguments against these incidents like Roswell um, and all these other cases where you have crashed craft. If they're so advanced, why the fuck are they crashing? You don't crash when you are that far advanced. Think about like jets that we have, supersonic jets. They don't crash. They don't just crash at all. So, so why are, why would aliens that have traveled billions of miles without getting a nick all of a sudden crash in the desert? That's, that's never made, made sense to me at all. So, so I don't understand that. And, You know, again, I think that leads to the idea that that would get the government we would be just as eager to to cover up a time machine as they would a UFO, if not more so. Yeah. But 
But it really comes down to, as we mentioned on the previous episode again, we know very little about time. Very, very little about time, about how it works. There's a lot of theories out there about how it works. But humans, really humans constructed the concept of time, the way we look at time now, how it works for us now. We created that. We constructed that to make things easier for us. That doesn't mean that's how it works. Right. That's just this concept that that humans have created to make it easier to calculate. In fact, the idea that time is circular and that the past, instead of linear, you know, from, from ancient times to, to present times and then the future, that it's circular and that all of it's happening at, at once. The past, the present, the future, it's all happening at the same time, just on different realms of existence. It could be that different dimensions are actually different points in time. Which could explain things like deja vu and glitches that we experience in the matrix. That we are experiencing a repeat of time, but it's a different realm of time. Does that mean we're jumping realms back and forth? It's possible. As I said before, to me... The time travel theory that UFOs are time traveling humans coming back to study us, whatever the case may be, rich folks, who knows. But to me, it ties up everything nicely from the technology used in alien contacts with, tech, you know, being able to communicate easily. Of course, we're going to work on that. We've always worked on that. We're working on it now. Being able to understand each other easier, that's a no-brainer. The advanced technology of the ships that they use, we're already there. We're already using advanced technology. Look into graphene. If you haven't looked into graphene, it's, a, it's incredible stuff. It's, it's the strongest, lightest material on the planet. And so people that find weird metals that they, it's it folds weird and it, it but yet it always you know goes back to structure that could be graphene just advanced far advanced it also explains how almost every encounter of aliens is humanoid almost every single one is humanoid that to me that's the biggest piece of circumstantial evidence is that it is future us that we have potentially genetically manipulated ourselves to become all kinds of different things cuz as i said people are identifying themselves as deer and shit so who knows what we're going to do in the future right i mean people are giving themselves tits you're telling me you're not going to become a lizard if you want come on And again, the messages of warning of, of, of we got to clean up our act. The future of humanity is at stake. They would have the most interest to tell us that over any alien race. But humans, since the beginning of time, have been and are fascinated and perplexed and held hostage by time. I'm a slave to it. I know a lot of people are slaves to it from planning for the future, thinking about the past, navigating through the present. You know, it's just this thing called time. It's, it's, it's such an abstract thing, but yet it never stops. It's just a such a crazy concept. I love it. Time. Right. But the ability to travel through time. We would answer so many questions that we otherwise, I don't think, could ever know. Absolutely. 
like like I said, the very the very first communications ever made before writing, we would have no idea because there'd be no documentation of it. But yet we could go see it. The original construction of the of the pyramids. Are we ever gonna know how they actually what what actually happened, how they really got built? Well, you would if you could go back in time. The Big Bang Theory, if you if it works that way to go out that if it's I don't know. But uh, potentially you could see answer all your questions just like we have the world's knowledge at the tip of our fingers, which not very long ago was not even imaginable to people who were looking to the future technologies, building sci-fi based off of it, which is all speculation. Even they couldn't see it, but we have it. So can we, are we so limited in our imagination that we can't even see time travel, but very, very soon they're just going to have it at the tip of their fingers? Maybe. And then humanity will be able to ask or will be able to answer questions that we've asked, again, since the dawn of time. Where do we come from? Where did all of it start? What does our future really look like? Because obviously, if you know the past, you're going to have a much clearer idea of what the future is going to look like. Because we barely know where our past looked like. So, of course, we're not going to know what our future does. And does that future look alien? Look so alien that that's why we can't imagine that it's us. Interesting things to ponder. For sure. Yeah. I love it. This idea of time travel. I just, you know, I, if you can't tell, (laughs) I, I would love to time travel. I, I think that would be, I mean, just the, the, once again, the knowledge gained, the perspective gained. I just, I can't even imagine what that would do to expand your, your, your idea of what humanity is. Yeah. So with that being said, the biggest question I have is what do you all think about this? Do you think it is uh, time traveling humans or do you think it is aliens coming back and visiting or are not coming back actually just traveling billions of light years and, and visiting us through wormholes. Are they using time? Maybe, maybe, maybe they're not humans, but they're just aliens utilizing time. Perhaps, perhaps. So if you have stories, experiences, you just want to reach out you want to talk to us, you can email. Uh, emails in the show notes. Again, the one link, the powerful link. I can't remember how I put it. I'm trying to put it one way in the show notes, and now I can't remember how I put it. Anyways, um, go and click that link. It'll take you everywhere you want to go. YouTube, Rumble, uh, merch, to the email, all that good stuff. But, of course, my favorite segment for my people, the UFO No Army. I love you guys so much. I can't even tell you what it means to me to have you all in my ranks but uh you too can join go donate patreon.com slash ufno podcast first shout out my og supporter first army member is designer tinfoil hat wearing aaron rice love you so much thank you lady for always being a supporter uh it means so much thank you thank you thank you Casey Armadillo, first merch buyer and now, of course, member of the UFO No Army. Dude, thank you. you. Michael Benavides, again. Man, thank you. And give me some stories about Roswell. I just picked on it, saying it's not even a UFO. Tell me if I'm right or wrong. Michael Ralston, buddy, love our conversations. Uh, Need to have you on the show, man. I would love to have you on. Uh, Jesse, thank you so much for your support. And, uh, Loves talking about the show. Hits me up every once in a while. Chat about the show. Thank you so much. Uh, always expanding my mind. And then 
new to the UFO No Army, Rihanna. Thank you so much, Rihanna, for your support. It means a lot. And uh, had a good conversation with her about her and her fiance and how they like to listen to the show and talk about the different dots to connect. Because we connect to some weird ones every once in a while. So again, you too could be a part of the UFO No Army at patreon.com slash UFO No Podcast. Where again, I'm going to release a new episode each week just for the members. Bonus episode. That's two episodes each week. And uh, bo- more bonus content coming as we move this thing along. Stay tuned. Love y'all. Thanks for your support. Any donation means the world to me for sure. And now for general shout outs to the Black Coast. Always giving me shout outs on the Instagrams. Love you guys. Killer, killer heavy metal band. If you guys like heavy metal, you will love Black Coast. Go and check them out. Uh, Wet Wired also is their merch brand. Go check that shit out as well. They got some cool stuff. I'm telling you, I really like these guys. And I love the fact that they love us. Uh, it means a lot. So super awesome. Bob Sowen, always commenting on the YouTubes. Thank you. Casey Leesky, my good friend, and always throwing me support. It means a lot, dude. Love you. And anyone who's uh, bought merch at all, you can tag UFNO Podcast in your sweet-ass gear to help us build a portfolio of fans. Just tag UFNO Podcast on the Instagrams. I'd love to see it. Um, and if you want to get a shout-out, Uh, Let me know you listen to the show or donate. It's that simple, super easy peasy. Uh, You can follow me, Ben Austin, on Facebook, Instagram, uh, even Twitter. But you can follow the UFO No Podcast on Twitter, Instagram, not on Facebook because Facebook doesn't like me. And um, you can find the podcast everywhere you find your favorite podcasts. Ed, tell the people where they can find you. Well, you guys can find me at uh, Linktree forward slash Red Tide Studio. And uh, after a long awaited second podcast from me, I am finally getting ready to uh, drop my first album or my first album. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> uh, my first episode <laughs> of uh, Strange Circumstances. That'll be uh, nice. probably coming out. The first one will be coming out by the end of next week, hopefully. Um, Rad. Yes, so be looking for that as well. That's awesome. Yep, and I'm sure the people can find that same place as they can find the UFO No Podcast, right? Yep, anywhere you get your fucking podcasts. Fucking podcasts. That's it. That's it, everybody. Exactly. Uh, So think about that one, UFO and time travel. So much fun. Love you all. Thank you again for tuning in to another episode. Remember... Watch out for the government. They're shoisty bastards. Oh.